Hey everyone, it's Tuesday the 10th of September and it's 3.30 in the afternoon and today I've got a little car boot haul to uh, take a look at. Yeah, not a very big one. It was um, the final one of the season here in North Walsham. Um, the Town Council a few years ago, well actually a bit longer than a few years ago, that's before the pandemic hit, they started um, hosting one on the War Memorial Park which is just across the way there, literally five minute walk from here, I'm not even kidding. Um, that's one of the adva uh, advantages of living in this flat when I can spit me words out. I am actually close to a lot of amenities, amenities, stuff. <laughs> um, you know, shops and parks and things, so not that I really use the park, got no reason to. Only when there's um, events being held on it. Anyway, but yeah, that was the last of the season until next year. They hold it once a month as well. I wish they held it a bit more frequently than that, like at least twice a month. Um, now, they don't charge a, pit fee, a pitch fee. I nearly said a pit fee. Uh, they used to when they first started doing this, but for some reason they scrapped it. But I, I think... They have like a donation bucket so sellers can just chuck something in there and that will go, you know, whatever they get goes to charity. I think. Anywho, uh, most of it is just die cast. Um, and actually, a lot of this I got from the die cast guy because um, even though this was the last car boot sale of the season, it's the first one he's done here in town because he usually does um, Alsham or Stalham. He'll sometimes do the one over at Stalham. But he just thought this weekend, you know, he'd just give this one a go and see what it was like. I haven't spoke to him since, so I don't know if, you know, how well he did and if he will do one again. Um, yeah, so, got a few other bits and bobs and a few items from local charity shops as well that I thought we'd take a look at and possibly possibly put a light up in the kitchen or I might do that in a separate video I haven't really decided where I want to put this light fitting yet um, yeah I haven't decided on that one yet right um, I'm going to go through everything that's not die cast first so um, I did find some light bulbs at this car boot I've been looking for some specifically, just ordinary incandescent light bulbs of 60 watt, because I've got 100 watt, I've got several of those, I've got quite a few 40 watts, but I didn't have anything in between. Um, well, actually I did, but I'd, I've really got very few, and with some of the light fittings I got, I thought, mm, I could do with some, you know, in the middle. So I just found a couple of these General Electric 60 watts. Is, General, is that an American company? Because I've heard that name used over there. And we, you know, we had stuff over here as well. But I don't know much about the company. So yeah, a couple of six. Well, I say 60 watts on the box. I never actually opened the box to have a look. It could be something else in the box. Uh, nope, they are 60 watt, or at least that one is. No, I still think it's a shame that they actually banned these over here, but I do see the reasoning behind it. I mean, these are quite uh, power hungry. Really, it's just a wire that works on resistance, doesn't it? You know, it's a wire that glows due to the resistance. You know, in a bulb full of gases to stop it burning out. That's fast. Is, it is my base, very basic definition of it. <laughs> so I've got those two, then I found this. It was in a box, but I got rid of the box because I wasn't really interested in it with this one. It's a little ever-ready, sort of compact CFL. It gives off quite a nice soft glow, actually. What are you doing in the bathroom, Snowy? Actually, you know what? I don't want to know. <laughs> it's, I thought it was going to be a lot dimmer than it actually was. You know, Considering it's like you can just about make out the uh, spirally fluorescent tube in there. It is a CFL. 
but I've never seen these in the shop. We have plenty of shops here that sold ever ready bulbs. But no, I never saw these. I'm surprised something that small has actually got just a standard bayonet cap on it and not the uh, SBC or the small bayonet cap. But this was my favourite buy and I have actually got the box for this and I'm going to keep the box. This thing. It's quite a chunky CFL, isn't it? It's made by Philips. It's a 25 watt. I don't know what. I've got one similar. I can't remember if it's Philips. I don't think it is. And it's got like, uh, well, a big bulb of glass over it like this, but it looks like that. It's opaque. Um, that does work. It does rattle. But that's literally just where this bulb connects to the base. It's just rattling there. Brand spanking new. It's never been used. I can see looking at the tubes, you know, there's, there's no blackening or anything there. Or the tube, I should say, because it is one continuous tube. Not two separate ones, which some of them do actually have, you know, two separate tubes. Yeah, I was um, quite stoked to find that, because they're not, not that cheap, even on eBay, you know. I don't know what it is, but a lot of collectors seem to like these, because I'm on a couple of uh, Facebook groups for lighting, and those that collect light bulbs and things, yes, there is people that dull. I'm one of them. <laughs> Uh, I suppose you could call us bright as we collect bulbs. <clears throat> Sorry. Anyway. Yeah, these seem to be quite sought after. People love these when they get hold of them. And I've seen the stories now where people have bought them online and they've arrived in the mail smashed. That would be one of my biggest fears of buying something like this. You know, and sometimes, you know, it's not always the seller's fault in the way it was packed, because sometimes they really do pack things well. It's literally just how they handle the bloody boxes, um, you know, at the delivery service. And they're all just as bad as each other. Doesn't matter if it's Royal Mail, DHL, FedEx, um, UPS, or in America, um, you've got UPS and USPS, haven't you, the United States Postal Service as well as uh, the Turd Brown UPS which is exactly the same colour over here, there is no difference, nor is the uniform <laughs> uh, yeah, they're all just as bad as each other, and they all lose parcels and whatnot. Um, actually I think Americans, the, the American Postal Service is worse than ours and I was watching a American couple on YouTube, I followed him for about, actually I followed his channel before his wife started joining in on the videos, that was well over a year ago, but anyway, you know, they got a PO box so their viewers can send stuff in, because they react to British videos, or British themed videos and whatnot, and I think every box he opened up in that video was squashed by the postal service, I don't know if it was actually ours, or if it was on, you know, the Americans end, but Probably a mix of both, actually. I really wouldn't be surprised if that was a mix of both. Why is it you've got to go wherever I put my drink? I don't like it because I don't like hair. Which is stupid, because I love fur. Don't I? But I can't stand it if I get hair in a drink or on my food. In fact, it actually makes me feel sick and it actually makes me feel like I am going to throw up, that's how bad it is. I don't know why, I can't explain why, you know, a lot of people are just like, oh, hair. Me, no, that is it. If I find hair on my food, I do not want to eat it. You know? <laughs> I have been known to actually just stop eating a meal because of it. Anyway, distract by a fluff butt. Now, um, I've got a few other things that I got from the car boot sale. Um, now I do like plushies, As you, if I just do that you can see I've got a little EV up there and I've got that group up there and I've got some Five Nights at Freddy's sitting up there and you can probably tell as there's three of them up there I like squirrels. Squirrels are actually one of my favourite animals, I do have a Facebook group specifically 
for those that adore squirrels. Um, and of course, I can't resist a soft toy. So we've got him. He's got quite a large tail on him. And I think going by that bit of thread there originally, that was there. But they always come undone because I've got another one on my lap that's done the same thing. Now, for those that may not know, I am autistic and a lot of us on the spectrum, um, I don't really want to say that we have sensory issues, um, but you know, there's some of us where we just feel, I suppose, certain textures and things, they will either make us squirm, hide and run for the hills, or it'll just make us adore them. And for me, it's soft. I love anything soft. You know, it's one thing that actually makes me feel calm. So I could just sit here and just do that with the tail of these. Look at that. They are actually pairs sewn together. So they're meant for like a couple, but I couldn't resist them. Not for, I think I paid a pound for it. So yeah, so if you're actually wondering why a man who's nearly 41 actually has these, that's why. Yes, I know, it's weird AF, but I really don't care. You know, I don't buy them to please other people. I buy them because it keeps me calm. It's what I like holding. You know, it's because I love the feel of them. I've got three more down here. In fact, I think I've got one of these already. But he was 50p. I've actually got a hand puppet somewhere as well. Um, then I've got a couple of TYs. I don't know what it is with the TYs. I sort of like them, but at the same time, I don't. <laughs> because a lot of them these days, like these two, like the little raccoon and skunk I got, they've got those eyes. Now, even though they're not actually moving, they give you that visual effect. So when you move, it looks like they're bloody watching you. Just like I've got these two up here. I've got another skunk sitting on my uh, lamp there, my little uh, funky lamp. And then I've got the fox up there. They've both got the same eyes. They're both TYs as well. And then I've got the TY beanie skunk down here. I don't know, I seem to have a theme for skunks and squirrels. And I seem to be two of my favourite animals. And foxes, actually. So if you're actually wondering why... <laughs> why those specific plushies on my monitor... I mean, Vulpix is technically a fox, a fox Pokemon. I don't really know what Eevee is. I don't know that much about Pokemon, but... I do like some Pokemon. Eevee's one of them. Eevee, Umbreon and Vulpix seem to be two of mine, or three of my favourites. Two of mine. I can't count, apparently. Uh, going off the subject of uh, cuddly toys now. I picked up a basket for a bike. It has got the brackets down on the floor. Um, there was actually an ulterior motive to buying this. I didn't have any carrier bags with me. Um, so I thought, you know, for a fiver with the bracket, I've got bikes I can stick this on. And it would be um, a very useful. So <laughs> I thought, I'll buy it. Even though I've already got one. Some, somewhere I've already got one. Right. Uh... No. Moving on to charity shops, this one came out of each East Anglia Children's Hospice. Can you guess what it is before I tell you? It's actually a camping light. And to turn it on, you just pull it down like that. And actually you hear a very nice click when I do that from the switch. And the same when I do this. If I don't slam it like that so I get that sound, you can actually hear a... You hear that? It's got quite a nice click. Yeah, so it's just... It's got cob light in there. I don't know how many cobs. 
it's hard to see them when they're turned on because this is quite bright. Uh, it takes three AAA batteries. I think double A's would have been better, but you just got that so you can hang it up in your tent. No, I said this is actually quite bright and pretty well made. It's got the UKCA mark on the bottom, made in China, obviously. That just unscrews, and that's where your batteries go. Simple as that. Simple design, but it doesn't feel like it's made out of cheap, nasty plastic, you know, that's going to break as soon as you sneeze near it, like a lot of things these days. Right. The other thing I've picked up, and I haven't actually decided, may have changed my mind where I'm going to put this, I really don't know. And I've just realised they're not the right screws in there for the bracket either, I'll show you in a minute. Yeah, I picked this up for two pounds out of the packed Animal Sanctuary. There's the bracket. Yeah, they're not the right screws. Someone's obviously lost them and then just used a couple of self tappers there. Doesn't matter. You know, so long as it does the job and holds this up on the ceiling, that's all I care about. Not fussing about screws. But I was planning to put that in the kitchen. Um, and when I actually saw them yesterday, I actually went back about half an hour before I um, put the camera on actually. But I saw two light fittings in there yesterday. They'd been dropped from £10 down to £2. I think £10 is a bit much really. I think a fiver would have been a fairer price. But anyway. Um, yeah, I was going to get both. I thought last night, you know, I'll go back and see if I can get both. But one of them had sold. Um, but coincidentally, that is the one I wanted the most out of the two. So, you know wasn't such a bad thing. Now I have got a Dell monitor on the floor but I need the desk space for that so we can't look at that yet. What I can go and get, I forgot about it, I've got a two slice toaster in the kitchen but I've always wanted four slice and that was in there for £3.50 from the um, Animal Sanctuary. Ah, finger stuck. Um, not packed. Priscilla Bacon I got this from. Um, I suppose I better peel that pro sticker off before I turn it on. It's on the plastic bit so I don't think it would be an issue. But just in case, there we go. So I got myself a little four slice toaster as long as it actually does work. Because sometimes they will pack test them. But I don't always plug them in and actually make sure the device functions. Now, if I was actually managing a charity shop, I would do that as well. I'd want them plugged in and make sure that they are tested and functioning. Crap. Can't do that yet because I haven't got the space. <laughs> so I guess we are now on to the diecast vehicles. Let's see if I can go through them. You know, by brand, it might be easier. I'm actually running out of places to put diecast. I've been sorting through them. I've found even more to go up on eBay. Um, I've got some Matchbox Convoy stuff to go up. Just some assorted stuff. A couple of it is mismatched. I've got one good, two good trucks, I think, out of it to go up. Anywho, uh, let's do the Hot Wheels because there's only two of these. So we've got this Datsun. I've got it in different colours, but I didn't have it in this blue, so I grabbed that one. Put these in the top of that cupboard, um, Lego box there. We've got this um, vintage Hot Wheels police car. But it's one of those, I can't remember what they call it, was it a crash and bash or something? You know, where you'd have two and you'd have like a, a Hot Wheels track you would use them on with like a cross section in the middle. And when they collide, that door would flip round and make it look like, you know, it's been um, crashed into. I never had these, these ones when I was little. I don't know why, I didn't actually have a lot of Hot Wheels. Now that I think about it, Hot Wheels, I didn't have a lot of. It was mostly Matchbox. So yeah, they're the only two Hot Wheels I've found. Um, 
Now this one, I was just using as a demo a minute ago, for demonstration purposes I should say, is a Tamika. And that is a Toyota Corolla. A very early one, because that's an older Tamika toy. Um, I believe I have said this before when I've shown Tamika on the channel. It's um, a Japanese company, it's actually Tomi. So you probably recognise Tomi more than you would Tamika. Um, and I believe Tomika mostly sells over in Japan. You can find it here and it's often not that cheap either. But they do make some absolutely lovely little cars. I've got some oldies like this. I've actually got a few of them. This one's probably in the best condition out of all of them. You know, they've got a metal base there and whatnot. Is that really? I can't believe I've just uploading a video to my um, gaming channel on YouTube. And so, I'm really done. I haven't even put the thumbnail up or anything yet. I don't know if you've noticed, I've started putting um, custom thumbnails up on this channel as well. Right, what shall I do next? Uh, let's do Matchbox. So, the die-cast guy on his stall, he obviously puts all the more collectible stuff on a table. You know, he's got a couple of wallpaper pasting tables that he puts everything on. But on the floor, he's got what he calls the kids' box, which he chucks stuff in um, for 50p each or three for a pound. Sometimes I like to have a dig around in there, and I've seen other collectors do the same thing. Um... But yeah, I found three more buses to go in the box of buses. I have no idea how many of these damn things I've got now. But I'm not going to stop. Every time I see one, I'm going to buy one. <laughs> Just because I can. So, I've got those. And I've got, I believe this is my second one, but this one is near mint compared to the other one. The other one's a little bit more play-worn than this one. It's a shame I haven't got the, uh, whatever it is that went on the back of this, I can't remember. But they always seem to be missing. Um, but that was in his... Yeah, I believe that was in his box as well. So was that. I got one of these in... I think it was that last... Was it the last box or the box before that? Full of random die cards that I got from... I can't remember, but... Anyway, this one's in way better condition than the other one. It's pretty, I couldn't find the body to go with it. Or any body. I'd settle for anything to go on that. Um, these ones, oh, hang on, let's do that one as well because that was in the box on the floor, little jeep. I'm sure there's more, yeah there was more than that down there but uh, that was all the matchboxes. I think the rest, there might have been a major, I can't remember. Oh, no, this one was in there as well, that was a major, but we'll get to that in a minute. Right. Now, for all the little matchboxes and Hot Wheels and Corgis that he gets that are, are in fairly decent condition, you know, maybe near mint or even in mint condition, he's got some matchbox carry cases that he puts them in. So I picked out these two. A couple of Mercury's, got the Far Chief version and the police. I've got a couple of these already, but that is in very nice condition. And I just love collecting the police cars and fire vehicles and things. Now again, I've already got these as well. But these are in by far way better condition, especially my, this fire one. My fire chief one's got most of the red paint missing. I'm not kidding, it's almost a bare metal car. It'd be perfect for um, a restoration project. And once I've found it out, that will probably end up on eBay as well. And I've got the police car as well. It's got the stickers worn off on the door, but does still have the bonnet sticker. Um, but that one's got most of the stickers on the door. Actually. No, they're not stickers, are they? I think they're transfers or something. Something like that. Uh, then I've got another Capri to go with the others. A nice pink one. It's like a flat black bonnet. Still got all the engine and everything in it. 
Now, I knew this existed, but I've never been able to find one until now. I've got plenty of the yellow version of this. It's a rollermatics like the yellow version, so you roll the back wheels around and that uh, platform would rotate. I don't know what animal is meant to be with this, because there's meant to be an animal sitting on that turntable. So that would spin around as you push it along the floor. It's meant to be like a plastic canopy that sits on the top there. I can't remember if you can get reproduction ones. I'm going to have to check eBay and see if you can get a repro of that, because that, other than missing those two bits, that's in mint condition. That's in absolute lovely condition. Right, two more, two more for Matchbox. Yes. So I've got this, I've got it in beige, or cream. That is in very nice condition for a green one. Original green. That's a Jaguar, or Jaguar as Americans like to call it. Can't quite read it. Two seconds. I'll get the magnifier. It is a Jaguar XK120. Yeah, that is in a nice condition. I'll probably get put with all the other stuff that I keep separately over there. All the stuff that I consider mint or very near mint. And finally for Matchbox, we've got this. I have got one, but this one's in better condition. This little Ford Thames estate car. Oh, just knows it has got a big chunk of paint out of the bottom there. Right. Corgi will be... Actually, no, before we get to Corgi, we've got this little oddball there for Hornby 00. The vintage 00 with the three rails, not the two. That's the second truck I've got. Now, I think the other one I've got is the same... Um, if I've still got it, actually, I can't remember where I put it. I think it is the same type of truck as this one, but it's in a different colour. Not green. Right, now we will go through the Corgis. So we've got a little Polo here. In very good condition. And in a colour I didn't have. I didn't have that one. I've got like a mint green one. I believe we've got a black one up on the shelf, but pretty damn certain I didn't have that one. And we've got this um, Cadillac Corgi Whiz Wheels. Corgi Juniors. So it's got the thin wheels and it's got the opening bonnet as well. I really like the look of that one. I like the thin wheels as well. I don't know why, I just like those wheels. Here we've got this Corgi Juniors Ford GT. Pretty certain I didn't have it in orange. I think that was in um, the Diecast Guys box on the floor as well. And then from Corgi, the two um, variations of... Ford Capri Fire Chief car they did it. One without, well, I don't think this one's had Fire Chief stickers on it. Should be on the door. That one's got them. These are actually in way nicer condition than the other ones I've got. I've got like at least two more of these each. Because I keep trying to find better ones and I don't know, these just seem to be rather play when I've not found anything completely mint. But these ones are in reasonably good condition so and that one's actually still got both fire chief stickers on the door you see it's got red bonnet on that one they've both got white base they're both um, whiz wheels corgi juniors i've actually really oh, they've got two different color into i wonder if the interiors change color as well corgi love to do that and the um window color on a lot of their models, they love to change those. Oh yeah, this one was in the diecast um, guys box on the floor as well. And I don't know why, because that's in really good condition. I'd have thought he'd have had that one up on the table. You know, it's a Corgi Transit van. Um, Royal Mail. Well, I personally like collecting these, and I've got at least one in a box, which is a Transco one. 
that's why I decided to uh, leave that one in there. So yeah, glad I got that one as well. Um, oh yeah, this one was in his box on the floor. The Corgi MAN truck, Robinson's fruit juice. I'd nearly left that because I didn't realise that was Corgi at first when I was having a rubbish in the box. Oh, you're back up here again, are you? Now, this one I did get from a different stall. So that one wasn't from Diecast Guy. I think yeah, it's actually still got a sticker underneath. Three quid. And from the same cell, I'm just trying to peel that sticker off. It was loose, but I ran the nail over it and stuck it down a bit harder. I'll leave it on there for now. But yeah, from the same stall, I've got this funky little thing. I've got something similar in the collection somewhere. I think it's a little bit smaller, but it's also a made in Hong Kong truck. It's got like a friction motor on the back, which sort of works. And the boom does extend. And it's got two sections there. But I'm guessing someone liked to play with that because that doesn't stay up anymore. Well, I just thought that was a nice little truck and, you know, for something made in Hong Kong, it's fairly heavy as well. That's fairly decent quality. <clears throat> he says with the voice going squeaky. I'm running out of space in my box down here now. Um, oh, here's another thing I got from the diecast guy. A little Corgi wreck truck. It doesn't say what the truck is and it just says Ford on the front. Um, but he was telling me he actually had this in his display cabinet until he had a change around a few days ago. And I've been looking for a truck like this for a while. Not that I really looked that hard because I could have found one on eBay quite easily. Um, but at least this cut out on the postage. <laughs> it does function, all the hooks are there. The only thing I can see missing it's one of the horns off the roof. Other than that, I really like that truck. It's a nice truck. Oh, and the cab tilts as well. I forgot about that. It doesn't sort of lock there, though, so it does flip over quite easily. Right, let's get another one of the larger items out of the way. This is another one from the Diecast guy. It's a Majorette Caravan. I don't think I've got any Majorette cars of this scale to actually pull this. I've got, hmm, it's been a while since I've been distracted by the phone <clears throat> while uh, recording. Anyway. Oh yeah, we got up to that caravan, didn't we? Right. Uh, I did find this lovely Matchbox Super Kings. Yep. BMW. In very nice condition, actually. Yeah, 750. From a different stall, along with that. I just like the look of that. I know it's a plastic toy. It's meant to light up. Don't think it's going to anymore. <laughs> I might be able to bring it back to life. I will give it a go at some point. Uh, Oh, and I got these from the stall. That was actually opposite the diecast guy. It's a Carorama, but they've got Oxford written on them as well. But I thought they were two separate entities. I didn't know they did this scale either, not in Carorama. I've got a Mark One Escort and a Ford Anglia. More from the diecast guy, I told you there was a lot from me. I've got the Dukes of Hazard set from Ertl. So we've got um, Cooters, Cooters Garage, I think that's a C. His lovely truck. He's obviously got the, uh, the Dodge Charger and the uh, police car to go with it. But then just for a bonus I bought another one. 
There's about four or five of those police cars now, but it's very hard to find those in good condition. And they're actually quite nice. Still, sticking with the, I think all of this now is die cast guy, in fairness. We have got a dinky. And that is an Austin. Uh, Atlantic. Austin Atlantic. And then we've got Triumph TR2. <coughs> and salmon colour. I'm sure I've got something. To, oh no, I think the other one I'm thinking of is an Austin Healy. I thought I had this in a different colour. No, now that I think about it, I'm pretty certain it's an Austin Healy. I think we've got this. A C A a secker a well, I have no idea no idea how that is pronounced I'm gonna assume a secker now I'm not really that interested in these sort of makes and models of car but I've always wanted to build a collection of old dinkies, so... And I actually really do like that. Not too fussed about the Triumph there. It's not really my cup of tea. It's a nice little model, but my real car wouldn't be. I'm not really sure about that. It's a funky looking thing. And I bet on the real car that would be an absolute pain to change those back tyres. Okay. Still, well, this is the last lot from the major, um, from the majorette guy, from the diecast guy, and these are all majorettes. That's why I said majorette guy because I was thinking majorette at the time. Anyway, I think. I think these three came out of the box on the floor. So we've got a Saab Turbo. I've got a black Saab Turbo up on my shelf. But it's one I restored because it was actually in rougher condition than this. A lot worse condition, actually. And of course, I haven't put the Turbo back on it because I can't do such transfers and things. So it's just a black Saab up on the shelf, unfortunately. But it was the Turbo. Like that one. Um, and then we've got this lovely Excalibur, which I think is meant to have like a roof on it, which is missing. But it still looks nice, and it's still got the windscreen. And a little yellow truck. Now the reason I got that is because I cannot remember for the life of me if the um, boat and trailer I've got, which I also got from the diecast guy a few months ago, had that style cab to pull the trailer, or if it was the Mercedes, um, you know, cab over flat nose style. I need to look that one up. Now these ones came, well, these three actually came out of his um, carry cases. So we've got the Citroen CX, which is in lovely condition. And then we've got the military Unimog. I've got a few versions of these. I can't remember if I've got one of these without the canopy, though. I just re I thought it was. The canopy was on backwards. Look, there we, there we go. That's better. Now, I can't remember if mine's just minus it. I'm sure I've got one in this colour. You get a little hole in the bottom there. Now that is for other attachments, for other versions of this. I've got one with um, a forklift attachment on the front. Um, and then there's one I've got with a snowplow. I should think I've got two with a snowplow attachment on the front as well. And then we've got this funky truck thing that Majorette loved to do back then. I've no idea what the truck actually is. Uh, no, it just says Made in France, Majorette. <laughs> That's all it says. Uh, oh, there's something written there. Hang on. No, it's just a scale. ECH 
with one slash eighty. I assume that's the scale. I'm getting close to um, double O gauge scale actually. But it is completely in very nice condition. And then I got this. <sighs> Made direct transport with cars. I don't know if they're the cars that are meant to be with it. But um, apparently it is a set. I've got one of these transports already, but it's not rougher than this. And it's got some different colours added to it as well. Um, but seven quid is all that cost me. Granted, a lot of the cars aren't great. That's the best one on here, condition-wise. My BMW at the top there in front of it, and then we've got a Simca right at the beginning. A Jeep on the bottom, and a Volvo Estate. So, I couldn't resist. Not because it was a transport, it's just, well, I haven't got many major transports, and I just thought this was nice. Um, I don't have the Simca. I do have the Jeep and I do have the Volvo. But I don't have the Simca in orange. I just love the fact there's a little dog sticking out the side. Now Matchbox did that with their Austin 1100s. Little dogs with its head stuck out the rear window like that. Actually I've been calling this a Simca. It's not. It's a Fiat 127. So I do apologise. I've got that totally wrong. It's a Fiat 127. Whoops. If any Italians watch this, I'll probably get um, an earache in the comments now. <laughs> Oopsie. I don't know why I had it stuck in my head that that was a Simca. Anyway, there's a little BMW here. I'm going to have to try and just press that corner in there. Can you see that's a bit spread out? I don't know how that happens. I mean, everything else looks fine. It's not squished up. And I believe the other one I've got is actually in green, not this sort of bluey silver colour. Still nice though. I don't know what this one is. It's got one of those weird names that I don't know how to pronounce. Carmag. Camargue, rather. C-A-M-A-R-G-U-E. It's a French sounding word. It's in nice condition though. I think I've got something similar to this, minus the hatch on the back there. And like I said, I've got these next two already. There's the Jeep. It's got paint or something on the wheels, especially this side. It might clean off, it might just be something that would clean off. We've got the doggo sitting up in the back there. And there's just a green Volvo. Actually, this Volvo is in better condition than my other one. And I do like a Volvo. Oh, that hasn't. Has it? Just trying to open the boot lid. Oh, it has. <laughs> got the rear facing rear seats in it. When I was a kid my mum and dad had a Volvo like that. I've got a feeling it was actually one of these. What is it? Is that the 245 or something? It is. Yep. Yeah, it's what they had. Which was um, my dad's dad's. A.K.A. my granddad's car at one point. Unfortunately though, that was a rock box, so it wasn't on the road for very long. Um, rock box to the point, mum took it out one day to go and get some groceries and the exhaust fell off. Um, then it sat on the garden and it was one of those cars where it was old enough, you know, to where the mirrors were actually on what we call the wings, which is why you'll hear a lot of British people call them a wing mirror. So we're on our wings, aka a fender. Um, I just went out there one morning, I must have been like 
you know, 12, 13, 14, something like that at the time. And I just poked the mirror and it literally, I'm not kidding, it just fell straight through the wing. <laughs> yeah, it was a wee bit on the rotten side. I suppose you could have restored it back then, but you know, it would have been a car that wasn't considered worth it. was at that point in its life where it just wasn't worth anything. So a lot of things would just get scrapped. And then, you you know, these days you think, hmm, I should have kept that. <laughs> yeah, that is a nice... Well, like I said, I'm assuming it's a set. That's what I was told, but I've not actually looked into it yet. So I'm going to put that on the floor and just grab the final item to take a peek at. I think that's the final. No, it isn't the final item. My bad. Um, so I've got these all together in a charity shop. They're in a bag together. So you've got Britain's Dutes tractor. Dutes tractor. I really don't know how you pronounce it. It's not in the best condition. I mean, three-point linkage has disappeared off the back. We do have the driver. We've obviously got the cab missing as well, and um, one of the dual headlights is missing. Uh, but that came with the hay baler, which I think I've already got. And a dump bed trailer. Now I had to put the tailgate back on, that keeps falling off. If I drop it or anything, that falls off. We've got all these straw bales with it as well. There's another one on the floor behind me because I dropped them all the other day. Really, all I want for my small Britain's collection is that trailer. I'm not fussed about the tractor. Um, or the hay baler, actually. So I might send a photo of those two to the diecast guy and see if he's interested in them. Because uh, that Dute, um, Dutes tractor seems to be quite a popular one. I've seen that around quite a lot at car boots house. None of them seem to be in a good condition. But maybe he'll take that either. Well, I suppose he could sell it as it is on the car boot for a few quid. Or um, just use it for spares for another Britain's tractor. Don't know. Yeah, all I want is the dump trailer out of it. Right. Now this is something I'm going to have to uh, switch out at some point, but probably not today. I didn't think this was a bad price either, so long as it works, of course. Oy. Got uh, Quite a nice Dell monitor there. HDMI as well. Uh, that was out of Priscilla Bacon. That's the £15 price tag that was on it. I am, the cables were plugged into it, but it was easier to transport it around with uh, everything unplugged. I knew that you could do that. remember what ports are using what now because I think I've only got one HDMI socket on that video card so I'll have to uh, just have a look and you know see what's what but that is actually a very nice monitor it does need a bit of a clean though but I was going to change the one behind it because that wobbles around on its bracket too much it's not nice and sturdy like this one Curiosity, though, I didn't really check. I know it came with an HDMI cable. Oh, it's got HDMI and VGA. So I could use it through a DVI if I wanted to. Uh, 
and I might give the other monitor because it's still usable um, to a friend of mine so we can upgrade his GPU because I haven't done it yet because I couldn't find a monitor because neither of his use HDMI and I think the one behind is actually HDMI as well as you know VGA1 VGA1 I'm surprised they didn't actually make it HDMI and DVI I'm just wondering why VGA I mean, that still seems to be a popular choice in a lot of things even today yeah, that's my cover I need to keep hold of that don't I yes push that over there I need to sort this chair out because that creaking is really getting on my nerves now Okay, I think, I think that is it for this video. Um, I haven't decided what to do with that light fitting yet. It was going to go up in the kitchen. But I don't know if I'm going to do that or... Because I want something different in here as well than spotlights. I just want to change. I've had spotlights up there for years. A few different fittings, I mean, I had to take one down because it got flooded. Um, so I've had like three different fittings up there, but they've all been spotlights, so I just want something different. But I don't think that one's going to cut it for such a big room anyway, so that probably will go up in the kitchen. And you both are only hanging around me because you know what time it is, don't you? But that's gone full now, isn't it? Yeah, nearly half full. Yep, it's their uh, dinner time, so I better go and feed them as well. Why are you trying to get over there, Smudge? Oh, and fun fact, I've now had Smudge for two years. Today. I only remember that for two reasons. One, Facebook um, put up a memory this morning from two years ago. Um, and I remembered, you know, it was um, a few days after the Queen's death that I actually picked him up. So, yeah. He's been my little man for the last couple of years, for the last two years. And the white ball of fluff, a year, <laughs> already. Now yeah, I'm talking about you. She is a weird one. She only likes cuddles at certain times. Because if I try to cut, you know, give her cuddles when she's not in the mood, she will literally just go like that and pull away. <laughs> and the time when she wants cuddles is usually first things in the morning when I'm laying in bed. In it. That's unlike her to jump up here. You hungry? You want your dinner? Yeah, that's Daddy's new monitor. Here you go. You're pushing my chair around. <laughs> Daddy's little girl. Mm. Daddy's little fluff ball. Now, which one of you broke the dinner plate last night? I was laying in bed when I heard the crash in the kitchen. I knew what it was, so I just left it. <laughs> you know, I'll just deal with it in the morning. Um, yeah, but I don't know if it was her that knocked it off. In fact, if I was a betting man, I'd have said it was um, Mr. Smudgy, who's actually on the floor down there, right by my feet. I bet it was him. I 
Or it might have been both of them. You have to get dinner. How about I shut the camera off and uh, go and feed these two? They're sitting here quite patiently, or smudges. She's gone behind the monitor. I'm just about to see. <laughs> you found anything good behind there? Does the mon monitor pass your inspection? Right, thanks a lot for watching everyone. As always, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and uh, subscribe for more. It's free to subscribe. I just saw a head pop up there. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.